deep down inside, people know what's best for them, but they, they don't have the trust. They don't, they don't believe it. And I'm not just talking about Ukraine. I'm talking about people in general. They, we've been all conditioned to think that we need some leader. And look at these leaders. But, you know, the president stole all this money. You have European Union trying to loan them money, but then to trying to change policy there and to benefit corporations. You have the Kremlin, you know, loaning money, but then you have to follow what they want to do. You have these oligarchs that have made millions and billions of dollars, you know, exploiting the people, and they want to just make them capitalist wage slaves. So what? <laughs> if you look at it on, on paper and just what these things have done, these people are helping them not at all. They're exploiting them. All, all, the, all the different choices they have are exploitation. It's what exploitation you want. And the people that they were so conditioned that we're going to like jump into a pot of boiling water. And then when we get burned, we go, oh, that was the wrong one. Let's jump into this one. Oh, that was the wrong one. We're going to jump into this one. When the answer is really right in front of our face, but we just were so conditioned to think that we're not allowed, we can't lead ourselves, we don't have the ability, we don't have, you know, we, God hasn't given us the power or, or you know, it's just not natural law for us to lead. We need, there's going to be chaos and craziness if we don't. But look what's going on right now when you have leaders exploiting you, you know. Um, and right now we basically have the West want to choose the European Union to exploit them and, and the East wanting Russia to exploit them. The elections are a farce because um, you, you have rich people with, with corporate in backed uh, money that um, you know, are career politicians or, or career um, business people that are telling like the blue collar, the working class what to do when they have no idea what it's like to be even part of that class. These aren't revolutions. These are, these are changing one, these are political revolutions. You're changing one leader for another leader, one leader for another leader. And yeah, maybe they're better, maybe they're worse, but it's the same system and nothing, nothing significant is going to come of it without the people stepping up and taking charge and, and demanding change um, and forcing their there to be a change. And unless this happens, it, there's no real change going to happen. So it's, it's going to be a shift to, to the left or maybe a shift to the right or maybe a shift back to the middle. But it's there's never going to be nothing significant, nothing long lasting, nothing that that uh, truly affects people's lives or makes their lives better. True idiocy um, or craziness is making the same choice over and over and over and over again and expecting different results. And that, that's what we're doing. We're, we're staying in the same political system, the same economic system, and expecting, oh, this is the guy, this is the woman that's going to change everything. But man, you're in the same system. It, it's, it's theoretically impossible for it to happen under these conditions. So it's... Craziness, it's idiocy. What do we? You got, you got to change the system. That's a difficult question. I, I truly don't believe they're going to be like a ground war between um, Russia and Ukraine, or or any kind of like a like a like a real military action. Because um, first of all, Ukraine depends on Russia for all its energy, all its gas. So um, how it's a it's a and since we are under these conditions of capitalism that Ukraine has no way to win the war, that Ukraine could have a far superior military than Russia, which it doesn't, and win the war, but they would still lose the war because Russia would say, okay, well, we're, we're not going to supply you with your energy. And Ukraine, what, what is Ukraine going to do? So um, it doesn't make a sense. And plus Ukraine, there's so many, there's so many rushing... Um, like there's so many R Ukrainians that feel the tie towards Russia as well that it, that the country would be split you know you need, like you said you have the West I mean if Ukraine was split down the middle and you know you have the West I still don't I still don't even think there would be a, a military action it doesn't make sense for any sides Russia would, would lose face in the, in the and face a lot of tough sanctions um, from other countries um, 
and Ukraine has no way to win this war militarily, so it would be crazy for them to, to embark on such an endeavor as that. Um, it would be suicide, really. So the, the war, if you want to call it that, is going to be behind the scenes. It's going to be a political war. It's going to be um, between you know, leaders and, and these um, corporations and oligarchs and um, people that are controlling. And the people, unfortunately, you know, are, are going to sit back and watch and maybe they're going to throw some rocks or complain or, you know, storm a building once in a while. But um, they're going to let these leaders from, you know, the Ukrainian side and Russian side and European Union side um, make all the decisions and, and they're going to live with it. And they might bitch about it, but they're, you know, I just, it, I'm looking at the history of, of the people, you know, the history of, of different countries in the world and, and what's going on. And, and for a country to, to annex another, an air, another territory or area, um, you know, it's always dangerous, you know, but it just happened again in, in the Falkland Islands where, you know, they had a referendum and a vote. Um, these, these islands were taken by force by Britain, like a long time ago. And, you know, they had, then there was a, a mini revolution or uprising um, in the 80s in the Falkland Islands. The British had to send troops and kind of retake the islands. Um, but they just had a referendum um, last year and like 99 or, you know, 99.2% of the people uh, um, voted to stay, you know, part of the British, the British Empire. And, you know, they were they were taken um, by force and, and exploita exploited for all these years. But, you know, right now the people, they, they're making the decision whether they're, um, you know, know what it would like, you know, these people and then their lifetime know what it would be like to not be under British rule. They, they like what's going on. And so they, they voted to, to, to stay that way. Um, and that's just what happened in Crimea now. The, the people voted and 97% said, no, we want to join Russia. We don't want to be part of the Ukraine anymore. And how, and how can you, if, if that's strong and overwhelming people and that's really the people's will and they're not being coerced into that decision, how can the United States like even talk about invading another country or occupying another country or doing any worldly event that involves another country with a straight face? The hypocrisy is so thick you can swim in it. The United States was in Iran, or I mean, sorry, Iraq, like invaded Iraq under false pretenses that they knew were false because you and had been inspecting Iraq since the first in, our first invasion and knew for a fact they didn't have any weapons of mass destruction or anything else that would deter a quick military victory. We go in there, we let Baghdad and some other cities rot for years. They go in and, and and secure all the oil pumps, they, you know, they sit on and set on fire, they put out the fire, they put all this technology and all these crews and, and get the oil pipeline kicking again, all this. Man, Baghdad didn't have power. They didn't have power for like four years. And they didn't have running water and sewer and all this stuff for like a long time after that, like in all the areas. My God. But they, the, the oil um, pumps were like literally within days, within weeks, were secured, flowing again and everything fine. And um, anyway, we're getting off the subject, but then we go into Afghanistan to, to get bin Laden. And bin Laden wasn't even in Afghanistan. He was only in Afghanistan for a short time and then had left. Um, and we used that as a way to keep the, you know, to get the oil pipeline from the um, Black Sea to the Caspian Sea. and. Um, you know, it's so, you could see right through it. It wasn't, they didn't even try to camouflage it. And we say, oh, that's what it is. The UN voted against us invading Iraq. We did it anyway. I mean, we've been in those countries for years and years and years, since 2003, um, when we invaded. You know, now it's 2014. And it's just like one long war. And so that doesn't give, get Russia off the hook for what they did with Crimea. But like I said, they, they voted to, you know, be part of Russia. What can you say? 
if you look at the at our history and and you know in South America, Central America, you know Asia and Vietnam and and Cambodia and all this stuff and Philippines even. You know, we talk about it next year. How about how about Hawaii? Hawaii, our fiftieth state. We went and took, kicked out the queen and and took it and annexed it and said it's part of us for the, for the Dole Fruit Company. You know what I mean? For 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 economic interests. You know what I mean? And we're saying, oh, you can't go to the Crimea. You can't go into the Ukraine because that's, you know, um, not not something a country does in the twenty first century. So. Um, pretty hysterical, to be honest. You know, don't uh, underestimate how big of a of deal this is with Ukraine and, and Russia right now, because this this is affecting the whole world is watching this and, and seeing where it's going to lead. And.